When people in the Philippines think of the big one, they think of the Marikina Valley Fault, a devastating magnitude 7.2 earthquake that could destroy Metro Manila. But there is another threat, a bigger threat, a megathrust threat lurking just offshore, one capable of unleashing a magnitude 9.0 earthquake and a colossal tsunami that would strike Manila in as little as 20 minutes. This is the Manila Trench, a 1,200-kilometer-long subduction zone, and it is the same type of fault that caused the 2011 Japan tsunami and the 2004 Indian Ocean tsunami that killed 230,000 people. This isn't just a shake, it's a wall of water, and 13 million people live directly in its path, most with no idea the threat even exists. The Marikina Valley Fault rightfully terrifies Manila. It's a strike-slip fault that runs through the city, but the Manila Trench, lurking beneath the South China Sea, is a different kind of monster. It is a megathrust subduction zone. This is where the massive Sunda plate is being forced beneath the Philippine Sea Plate. This process is not smooth. For decades, or even centuries, the plates lock together. The stress accumulates centimeter by centimeter, year after year. The longer the fault stays locked, the more energy it builds. And when that interface finally slips, it doesn't just shake the ground, it moves the seafloor. The seabed above the fault will suddenly shift vertically by several meters, displacing billions of tons of water. That displaced water has to go somewhere. That water becomes a tsunami. This is the exact mechanism that triggered the 2011 Japan tsunami. The Manila Trench works the same way, and it is capable of the same result. Here is the most terrifying fact. We have no written records of a major megathrust earthquake along the Manila Trench in Philippine history. Not during Spanish colonization, not during American rule, not in modern times. This is not good news. This is the worst possible news. Megathrust faults operate on long cycles. The 2004 Indian Ocean Fault had been locked for about 500 years. The 2011 Japan Fault had been locked for over 1,000 years. The silence of the Manila Trench means the stress is enormous. Scientists have found geological evidence, tsunami deposits along the coast of Luzon, layers of sand and debris that prove massive waves struck the Philippines in the past, possibly 500 to 1,000 years ago. If it has been 500 plus years since the last major rupture, the accumulated stress is catastrophic, and the next earthquake will be catastrophic too. Fivilex estimates the trench is capable of a magnitude 8.0 to 9.0 earthquake. Let's walk through the scenario of a magnitude 9.0 rupture. The fault would slip 30 kilometers beneath the seafloor. The shaking would last for 3 to 5 minutes, not 45 seconds, but 5 minutes of violent rolling motion. Older buildings across Manila would collapse, bridges would buckle, fires would break out, but the shaking would only be the beginning. As the seafloor lurches upwards by 5 to 10 meters, a tsunami would be generated. It would radiate in all directions, but a massive portion would head east, directly toward the Philippine coast. It would reach the coast of Luzon Zambals, Pangusinan, in 15 to 30 minutes. For Metro Manila, the geography is a death trap. Manila Bay is a shallow, semi-enclosed body of water. This is the worst possible shape for a tsunami. The bay's funnel-like geography would amplify the wave, concentrating its energy as it nears the coast. Fivolk simulations are catastrophic. A magnitude 8.5 quake could generate a 5 to 10 meter high, 15 to 30 feet. Tsunami in Manila Bay, a magnitude 9.0 quake could generate a 15 to 20 meter high, 50 to 65 feet, tsunami the height of a five-story building. This wall of water, moving at highway speeds, would strike low-lying coastal areas like Navotas, Malabon, Tondo, and Pasay within minutes. The wave wouldn't just flood, it would destroy, carrying debris, vehicles, and entire buildings with it as it surges kilometers inland. Metro Manila is uniquely vulnerable to this specific threat for several reasons. Extreme population density, coastal barangays in Navotas and Malabar have some of the highest population densities on Earth. Low elevation and subsidence, much of coastal Manila is barely above sea level. Worse, Due to groundwater extraction, the land is actively sinking subsidence, meaning the tsunami's impact will be even more severe. Poor infrastructure. Many coastal communities are informal settlements. Roads are narrow. There are few designated evacuation routes or tsunami-proof shelters. Lack of awareness. This is the most critical failure. Most Filipinos are trained for the Marikina Valley Fault. They have never heard of the Manila Trench. They don't know they live in a tsunami zone. They don't know that after a long earthquake, they must run to high ground not wait for a warning. Even with a perfect warning system, the 15 to 30 minute window is brutally short. Fivilex estimates a major event could kill tens, or even hundreds, of thousands of people. The economic heart of the Philippines would be devastated, a recovery that would take decades. We cannot predict when the Manila Trench will rupture. It could be tomorrow, or it could be in 100 years. 
but we know it will happen. The stress is building. The 2004 Indian Ocean tsunami killed 230,000 people because no warning system existed. The 2011 Japan tsunami killed 18,000 people despite Japan's advanced warning systems. The Philippines is somewhere in between. The solution is not simple, but it is clear. Awareness, the public must be educated about the Manila Trench. The big one has two faces, and this one involves water. Warning systems, the Philippines needs to invest heavily in deep sea dart buoys and sirens. Infrastructure, coastal communities need designated vertical evacuation structures to all strong, reinforced buildings where people can flee if there's no time to reach high ground. Drills, regular mandatory tsunami drills are not optional. They are the only way to hardwire the 20-minute survival instinct. The Manila Trench is the single greatest natural hazard facing the Philippines, and most people have never even heard of it. The fault doesn't care. It will slip when it is ready. The only question is whether we will be hit that like button to spread the awareness, and to stay informed on the secrets that lurk beneath our feet. Subscribe to Bay and Tubi right now. We'll see you in the next deep dive.